Hey, Ronnie Dahl for Wheeling Australia. Welcome to the next phase of the Land Cruiser. It's been six years now. A lot of changes have happened to this Land Cruiser. It's gone through all kinds of different stages, been heavy, been even heavier, been obese heavy, and now it's probably the lightest it has ever been. The lightest it has ever been. Apart from when it rolled out of the Toyota yard, of course. Guys, so here we are. I'm going to attempt to do six years in 60 seconds. It's not going to happen. I just know it. Anyway, this vehicle started bulk stock, as all vehicles do from the Toyota yard, with a steel tray on the back, which, is, which will be heavier than the tray I have now. I then put a big canopy on it, took the drop sides off, loaded this canopy up with heaps of gear, and it ended up pretty damn heavy. It wasn't handling the best. Then I took that big box off to save weight, and I went back to an open tray. put toolboxes in it. After that someone hit me in the back and then I used insurance money to get a custom tray done on the back and that was from on track fabrication. It was a big heavy steel tray. Nice looking tray but far too heavy still. But at the time it felt light because I'd taken the box off. It, that was probably the lightest it's been but then I added a big frame on the top of it with another headboard on the back to hold the spare wheel. So now I've added weight and put the wheel on the back, which is the worst spot you can put a wheel, but it looked good and that's what I was going for. I was going for the looks and sometimes that can get you into trouble when it comes to weight and handling and that's what happened to me. But I went one step further there. I put a half box on the driver's side and a half drawer system on the passenger side. That was made out of 3 mil alloy and that was when the vehicle was at its heaviest. 4.2 ton on the Kimberley trip and then a few trips after that 4.2 ton far too heavy you may have seen some of the episodes where we did southwest yeah. and let's just call that pear shaped again driving down this hill nearly rolled the car over too much weight, I, it, it just didn't handle well. So I started stripping everything off it. And then now, we're at the point where I've changed the tray to, to the lightest option on the market that looks good, and that is the P-Core tray. So yes, a lot of you guys guessed it. I will show you that in detail, so just be patient. Project Black was also one of the fixes to the weight. That was the lightest fully set up box or canopy that I've ever had and it's still on there. That thing is not going anywhere. It is set up exactly to how I want it and it is super light. Project Black combined with a P-Core tray and everything else I've done on the back there is the lightest this vehicle has ever been fully kitted. Okay, so keep this in mind. Fully kitted, that's all I need. It is so light. I just come back from a trip from the Southwest and it handled so beautifully, beautifully. I was smashing up sand dunes in fourth gear low, just holding it the whole way. I wouldn't normally drive like that, but I wanted to test this out and see what it can do. And mate, it is so, it is so light. It just, you know, I was driving around uh, other people on, on slopes because they're in the way. And I was like, I'll, I'll, I'll give this a shot. Normally, the back end slips in like this and the person has to move because otherwise I'm going to hit them. It just went around. The back end does not determine where my vehicle goes anymore. So it, it's like I've equaled the weight out on the front and the rear. Here's something I would never have been able to do beforehand and that is reverse up, Jaeger up entrance to the hill. Now, it's not something that you should be doing or you need to do, but this was a test for my vehicle just to see the weight of it because it just felt so light. And I'll tell you what, I would not have been able to do this before. I would have sunk the back wheels right in.
Cold cup in reverse. Um, oh, yeah, that's the cup, sorry. Next one's cold cup. <laughs> I'd like to see you do that. I've also sorted out some stuff on the roof as well. Um, I've changed a lot of stuff, so let's let's get into everything I've changed. Yeah, you may want to sit down for a while. This this video could take a while, and there are some skip points in the bottom if you want to jump back and see what it was I was showing, or if you don't want to see that part, you can skip to another part. So stay tuned, guys. Let's get into it. This is a side profile of the vehicle, how it is at the moment with the new roof rack, the new tray, Project Black, the new addition to Project Black, and the Rhino hide. A lot of people have asked me about this. Now, I was only going to put this on for one trip, for one only trip, just to test it out for a mate of mine who happens to be Rhino hide. But I like the look of it. I like the sign writing he did. This was his idea. I reckon it looks fantastic, so I left it on. And you're not meant to leave these panels on, but I have. And Mark was a bit worried, so he checked where the magnets are. There are no scratches where the magnets are. And one cool thing about this Rhino hide, what is it for? That's what it's for. You can hit any bush you like. It's not going to dent your car because there is an air gap in between. It's not like those other things where there's like a big sheet on there that will transfer the actual force through and will actually still put a dent in your vehicle. That's not the reason why I've got it on though. The reason why I've got it on is just purely for the looks because for me to have this on, it's kind of a bit late. I've got so many scratches on there, so let's be honest, I don't need to have this on. I just want it on because it looks cool. Right, moving on up here before we move over there. I feel like the weatherman. Actually, there's a storm coming, so we better get moving before my cameras get wet. Righto guys, so this is the third day of pulling stuff off. We're gonna change the roof rack this time. The uh, reason why I'm changing the roof rack is it it's not, doesn't quite suit the new look, and um, it's time for a change. This is a Pioneer platform, a Rhino rack but it's on a PDP, Perf Desert Performance backbone system. Pretty cool looking system, pretty sleek looking. Wasn't too hard to put on, but there's, there's a bit of bracketry going on here. That's not going anywhere. So I've got all these cutouts on it, allowing for my lights, which is all hooked up for that PDM system, which was in another video. They've got the custom brackets for the front facing um, LED bar lights. The reason why I have two lights up here and, and not just one long one is because I have slightly tilted the lights out like that so they're shining a little bit more spready. If you have spot with LED you're still going to get spread. On top of that we have two max tracks side by side. I've done that because of looks and purely because these latest max tracks, that's a prototype I have up there with the metal teeth, they will not stack four on top of each other with the max tracks pins. So I don't know if max tracks are bringing out new pins, hopefully they are, but nonetheless I'm going to leave it like that because I like the look of it. It's like two max tracks side by side. Next to that is a solar panel. And there is another solar panel on this new box up here too. Why have I split the solar panels up? The main reason, that solar panel powers my front batteries. This solar panel powers my back batteries. If I want more power, I'll get my solar blankets out. So I have the Red Arc amorphous blanket in conditions like this today. And if it's not like this, well then I'll grab the, the other blanket I have, which is an AllSpark blanket that has an angle and it's a 200 watt panel. So I have two different brands of solar panels for two different reasons and two different conditions. I still have the ensuite up here. The water pump, I haven't quite hooked it up yet because there are two water pumps happening now. I'll get to that one, so stay tuned. My latest and favorite mod, the Pcor tray. Yeah. I reckon it looks bloody sleek, and I'm sure a lot of you guys think that too. All looks are acquired, like wine is an acquired taste, but um, I think it looks mint. One thing I was worried about was when I put this Pico tray on, would my vehicle just look like one of the Patriot Super Tourers and, you know, and whatnot? It doesn't because I've got my own custom box on here, got my own other custom box on here, I've done my own touches to it, and my vehicle, with all the bar work and everything, it is remaining the way it is. So that was one major thing. I didn't want it to look like a Super Tourer. I wanted it to look like my own unique sort of vehicle. So there are some other subtle changes I might do. Um, I do like the mud flaps, but I may make that in silver just to tie in with the rest of the vehicle. This I'll of course leave. 
because I like that. I actually like that look there. It was a yellow. It's got the winch on the back as well. Do you need a rear winch? Nah, you don't need a rear winch. That's there because it can be there. And you know what's funny? This whole tray with the rear winch weighs less, still weighs so much less than what I had before. I reckon I've dropped, now I can't confirm this yet, but in feeling the way the vehicle drives, it feels like I've lost half a ton, but I reckon I've lost about 250, 300 kilos. And how is that possible? Because all of this is aluminium. The whole tray is aluminium. It's the same size, if not slightly, ever so slightly bigger, like longer. However, my vehicle is shorter because I don't have a tire hanging off the back. And that is another way I've lost weight. So I'm factoring in that is 50, 60 kilos. I used to carry two. I now only carry one. I used to carry one there and one on the back. On the back is the worst place you can carry your tire because you're putting your center of gravity further back. So you're gonna be more prone to lifting wheels and the back is gonna determine more where your vehicle is gonna drive. That's gone. This frame is gone that was on the previous tray. Now, Peacord do offer a frame as well, but I opted for not going for that. I just want it like this now. Open, less weight, it's easy to get to. Project Black is back on. You would have seen that in a previous video. This weighs 50, what was it? 61 kilos with the lithium battery in it. But then, you know, you add all the other stuff in there. So there's a bit of weight here, but not much, not much at all. Two of us can just lift this with all the gear in there. Up here we've added, let's just call it a storage box. So currently there's a solar panel in here, a uh, couple other things. I've, I've got to load it up with more gear. And then there's a fixed solar panel. Sorry, there's a solar blanket in the box, so I'm not confusing you. Solar panel. These lights are actually from the headboard on the Peacor tray. I've taken them off and moved them to the back because where they were, you couldn't see them with all this box on here. Another thing I've done is I like to have my box inside the drop side because it protects the box. Um, I know it's a two action opening now, but I've always had that. That's what I always prefer. So I had to modify the tab to open this tray because the tabs are actually on the inside like that. So if I had it on the inside, I wouldn't be able to get, get to the drop side or open the box. So that's why I've made this little modification here and it's working out really well. I just had to be really careful where I drill into a brand new tray. Let's go a bit more onto the tray. So a few people have asked me on social media, oh, when did I go to Queensland to get this fitted? I didn't go to Queensland. They actually fit these locally. So I got this done at TJM in Wangara and a big shout out to Danny and Alex from TJM in Wangara for you know working late nights to get this sorted. They fitted this in between all their other heavy work schedule. Not only did they put the tray on, they also put the fuel tanks on, but I'll get to that, and the exhaust. I had to change the exhaust because it wouldn't fit my previous exhaust. The twin pipe would not fit with the tray and would not fit with the fuel tanks, but we'll get to that. Let's quickly run through the peak off. It's all central locking. There's two boxes, one on either side. That's the water pump. This is my drinking water, 70 liters underneath the tray, plumb straight in. That's the cool thing about this tray. I know a lot of people are gonna say that this stuff is overpriced. The thing is you pay for what you get, and everything is pre-wired. It's all the lighting and everything. So when you buy this tray, everything comes with it. Everything, the water tank, the water pump, all the wires, it's just all Deutsch plugged as well. And central locking. That's all my hoses and stuff in here. On the back here, we have the rear drawer. Here we go. Got my uh, nature cool shovel in here. It's actually a really good spot to have it because I can just grab it got my camping chair in here this is an aluminium chair not the most comfortable chair but i'm a bit of a chair thief when it comes to camping anyone that's camped with me will know what i'm talking about it's a pretty shallow drawer i gotta say but it's a big drawer it keep it holds a lot of stuff and behind this drawer is the water tank which is 70 liters which i already mentioned on this side there is another box again this box here has my inflation and deflating tire equipment and straps and I'm still getting used to loading this vehicle out with all these new spots to put things I'm being very careful I'm not just throwing stuff in there I don't need because that's when you're adding weight to your vehicle in the back still running the 40 litre angle 
been good for me for about four years. I will do a review on it soon. This is a combo, the 40 litre. So currently 27 litres of freezer and 13 litres of fridge, but I can swap it over. This has my camp oven in it, uh, all my cooking utensils and a bit of food. So the way you see the vehicle right now is how I'm set up for a very short trip. So we just did a trip in the southwest. I towed the boat down there. We did a bit of boating and a bit of full driving. The new swag, which matches the color of the whole vehicle actually. So that's pretty cool. All this stuff here, that is how the vehicle traveled. Nothing else on it. That's how it traveled. And we spent four days and we had a lot of fun. So it's good to be back to basics. This is also forcing me not to bring a whole heap of stuff I don't need. The next subject, that is the Brown Davis fuel tanks. I used to have the uh, ARB Frontier tank underneath it. Why did I get rid of that? Well, it's quite simple really. The tank was fine. It was lightweight because it's plastic as well. So it would be a lot lighter than the Brown Davis. Uh, that was one of the benefits. But one of the things that was just driving me insane, every time I stopped at a set of lights, I stopped the vehicle. There are no baffles in that poly tank. I kept sitting like this. And even, even like a small slight stop, you're trying to fight your neck not doing this. It is so annoying. Also off road, when you go left to right, left to right on those big whoopee holes, it kind of adds to the momentum of, of that swaying thing happening. And I've noticed a difference after I put this tank in. I'm not, I'm not getting that now. It's, um, you can even hear the fuel sloshing around. So that is why I got rid of that tank. And that tank cost me 1200 bucks as well. So anyway, look out for it on Gumtree. It's not a bad tank if you can put up with that annoyance of what's going on, that constant thing. As I said, there are two tanks. This one here is a 185 litre tank. The other one is a 110 litre tank, which is split into two and that's underneath. So I can draw from either tank. There is a second pump in there. So it's like having a single cab cruiser with the two 90 litre tanks, except for I have a 185 on the back, 110 on the front. I can draw from either tank. So the whole idea of this, then the whole reason for this, was to shift the fuel weight forward. So all that fuel is now sitting between the two axles, 110 litres, and 185 is sitting on the back. So if I'm going to a destination, I'll use the back tank first. When I get there, I'll then run off the 110 litre tank. If I'm just going down to Brunswick, I just won't fill up the back tank, I'll just draw from the front tank. And then all my weight distribution is a lot better and it'll be even lighter on the back. So if you're picking up what I'm putting down, it's shifting weight forward. So this is a switch between main and auxiliary with the fuel. There's a fuel gauge for the other tank. I've decided to put it in this side bit here because it's not in the way. And it kind of looks neat there. And the lighting that's in it is not in my eyes or my face either, which is good. So I can actually see it from a glance from sitting in the, in the chair. So I had a lot of questions asked about the PDM since the last review and people are asking if it's the same as S-Pod, that's what the Americans are asking, or is it the same as the Lynx from AIB and is it the same as the Red Vision that's come out. It's on its own playing field compared to all those. These three that I just mentioned, they all need relays and fuses. Basically it's just like another electrical box somewhere else but it has like an app device which you can which you can use. The PDM is very different. It's it's like smart wiring your house. It's smart wiring. So smart wiring on the vehicle, for example, if I press these side lights down here, that means my side lights will be on and when I'm in two wheel drive, once I get over 40 kilometers per hour, they will turn off automatically to stay within ADR approval. But if I put it in four wheel drive, I can have all the lights on that I want. I can put reverse lights, I can put work lights, side lights, uh, every single light that I have that's connected up to the PDM, I can put them all on. If I'm in two wheel drive around the street to stay ADR approved, as I said, the side lights will turn off at 40 km per hour. If I put the reverse lights on now, as soon as I take off, that'll turn off automatically. If I put on the work lights and the roof lights, they will also turn off automatically. But it keeps memory, so next time I'll pull up, they'll turn back on again. The winch button function, that is to pair the two batteries, as you can see over here. Um, we'll just move this one a bit. 
right there is a battery link button. So if I turn the winch button off, you see it turns off. This is a momentary switch. However, if I use the PDM, it becomes a permanent link until I decide to press it, or uh, turn it on or turn it off. What happens at the same time when I press that winch button, apart from pairing the two batteries with each other, it also activates the winch. So now the winch is no longer isolated, I can use the winch. I haven't got the rear winch hooked up to this function yet, but we are going to look at doing that. And what else is there to talk about on the PDM? The intercooler fans, well, that, that's also another function. I don't have intercooler fans, but if I had an aftermarket intercooler, I could toggle the fans on or off. It's also working in an automatic function. So if I'm on the beach and I want it on constantly, I'll just override it and I'll let it run constantly. Now I'm going to quickly cover the light function, well, my driving light function. So we put the high beams on. There we go. High beams are on. What happens down here is it memorizes what my high beam function was last time. So I have HID lights. This is simple on off because I only have one set of HIDs. This one over here is LED lights. So now I've switched them all off. The middle button says that's all off. Now I have the front bar lights on. Front bar lights are now turned off. Now I've got the roof lights on only. Press that again. Now I've got bar lights and I have the front lights on at the same time. So it's a multi-function button. When I turn the vehicle off, even with the high beams on, like now. So now the engine is no longer running. The PDM has sensed that the, there's no more charge coming from the alternator. So it then switches off all the lights that I had on. Now when I parked up a camp, I can always put you know, work lights, roof lights, or whatever lights on I want. I can't even do these, but I have to override the system and tell it, hey, I want them on. I know it's not good for my battery, but I want them on. So there is an option to do all that as well. So that's how it works. This down here is a multi-function 12 volt power system. I have three circuits at the back. So one press, you have to illuminate the panel first. Now they're all off. Now one's on, now a different one's on. Now two are on. Now a third one is on and you can do any combo you want. So it's a multi-function button. I think there's like six presses you can do on that, but it memorizes what you set it to. So it's not something you have to do every time. That's just a smart system in a nutshell. In a nutshell. There are zero fuses, apart from the power fuse that goes to the PDM itself, but there are no fuses, there are no relays. If it senses there's a short in the circuit, it'll flash a light down here on me. It'll tell me there's an issue. To reset the system, if there's a fault, you just hold the button down for three seconds and then it resets it. And if it keeps faulting again, then there's something wrong with your wire. Maybe you snagged some, snagged a bit of wire or something. So that is the cool part about that system. No fuses required. Should the system fail, which I highly doubt it will, uh, it, it's only going to hinder your accessories that's hooked up to it. So, you know, your HID lights and all that kind of stuff. Everything else in the vehicle, it doesn't touch. Cold water temp, RPM, intake temperature. So that's what's coming through the, um, the snorkel into the intake. And that is the load on demand, to see how much I can see is left in it. So right now it's using 12% of power. So if I was to take off and put load on the vehicle, it may go up to 30, 50 or whatever, and that tells me how much more is left. It kind of helps you drive a little bit. So you, you can kind of better your fuel economy. This over here is main battery voltage and main battery ampage. This reads the PDM. So if I, say, put my high beams on, and it remembers the circuit. Now it's telling me how much amps are being pulled out of my um, battery. And it, the, so you can, you can see the voltage has dropped as well. So I can actually press the winch button on to join the batteries and that'll help it a bit. Over here we got 15 volts on the lithium battery and there's nothing being used. So the fridge is, is idling at the moment. Uh, once the fridge picks up, it may look, show like three amps or something there. Or if I'm charging gear in the back, it will show um, more charging down here on the ABA. So that's auxiliary battery amps, auxiliary battery voltage, main battery voltage, main battery amps. Let's turn the high beams off again. And there we go. Drops down to 0.4 because I'm charging my GoPro right now.
We're now to the final major change, and that is the exhaust. So for five years, I've been using the twin Redback system. That has by far been my favorite exhaust. The note I got out of that was awesome. But I couldn't keep it because one, it was rusted out. It maybe had a year left in it, and it had done a lot of punishment, so testament to that exhaust. But it wouldn't fit with the fuel tanks or this tray because of the toolboxes, because they've utilized so much more space of all the spaces underneath these 70s. There's so much space under them, and all that space has been utilized now and put to use, or put to use, utilized, same thing. This exhaust is a three and a half inch. Tried the resonator, I found that too quiet. Now, most people, most people would prefer it to be around a resonator noise, right? Because it's not too loud. I like it loud. My vehicle has always droned when I'm driving. It doesn't do it now. So I'm working with Talkit at the moment to try and develop a middle piece that I'll be happy with, like a custom piece. So I get that crazy note. So we have done something in the middle, but it's not quite there yet. So hopefully we can get there because that matters to me what the vehicle sounds like. That's half the reason why I have this vehicle. It's an overpriced, overweight, clunky vehicle that has not much flex, but it sounds awesome, it looks awesome, it's great to drive, and it's damn robust. That's why I own this vehicle. We're pretty much done full circle now. Just to answer a few other questions, uh, yes, the tires I still have on here are the Maxxis ones. Uh, so I've, I've got some time to work out what to try out next because this is the second set I've put on it. Uh, the roof rack, we already covered that. As you can see, it's a lot more streamlined. Uh, something I will be changing is the Oricom. I'm not too happy with it. I do want to rip all the interior out and just redo it. I want to reupholster the sides and everything because everything is a bit... It's been pretty worn out. Like it, It's done a lot of hard work. It's like It might have only done... 170,000 Ks, but those 170,000 Ks has been constant dust, red dirt, sea spray, sand, wear and tear, getting in and out, all the camera gear boxes on the back seats. So I think it could do with a nice restoration on the inside, just to make it look a bit nicer. I'll have to go maybe like a black theme on the inside. Uh, but apart from that, I'm very happy where where the vehicle's at. I'm very happy with the looks of it. Every time you change a vehicle, it does take a while to grow on you, but this only took like a couple of days. So, and I really like the lines of it now. So it comes in, steps out, steps out, and steps out again. So I'm really enjoying this side of it. Just, I like all the steps in it. The other side is pretty cool too, the way it's got, got the box that steps out. I reckon if I had a box that followed the same profile or was further in, it might look a bit weird. Um, but I'm very happy with how it's gone. My other concern was the box on top of this box. I thought, oh, that might look a bit like, you know, just like toolboxes on toolboxes. But it doesn't. I think it looks really good. And then the solar panel on top. And I'm really happy with how the vehicle looks. And I'm more happy or pleased with how it handles. So that is the current setup. And I dare say it's going to remain like this because I have played around so many different things. I've tried everything on the vehicle. Weight is an issue. Okay, so may all this be a lesson to you. Don't just put on a big canopy and load it up with, with gear. Figure out exactly what you're going to do and think about the handling of your vehicle. Is it going to be just a tourer where you don't have to worry about the back end being really heavy? Then that's fine. Go do what you need to do. But if you want to use it to do tough tracks and have a bit of fun in it and go up and down sand dunes and go to remote places and do the daring things to get to other places through like sand dunes and muddy hills and stuff on angles, you're going to want a vehicle that's going to behave properly. And that is what this does now. It behaves properly. So really pleased with it. Still running the PDM. That's been really good. Been testing new profiles lately. So we refined some of those. Just got a new update when I, when I got home as well. So it's, it's a constant evolution on this vehicle. All the tunes that Perf Diesel Performance have done, they've, they've been there since almost day dot. Engine's fine. That's probably the only thing that hasn't had a hiccup on this vehicle is the motor. So 
as far as the engine tuning goes, I'm pretty happy. We did get the numbers out of it, but then I asked them to dial it back. So it was, you know, so it was a safe tune because I'm going to remote places. I don't want a vehicle that's pushing ridiculous Newton meters of torque and, um, you know, just getting high figures at high RPM. I need something that's, that's tough down low, that's got the good torque and it needs to be reliable so I can get there and then get home as well. And so far in this six years of all the places I've taken this vehicle, I've always driven this vehicle home. So that is how I'm set up for a short weekender. If I'm going away on a remote trip, swag comes out the back, storage box comes out the back, I hook the trailer up, and if we want firewood, that goes in my tray. That's it, that's it now. Plus I need somewhere to put the dog, and that's another reason why I've gone for like, sticking with the half box of Project Black, because it works for me and it's lightweight, and I still have room for the dog in the back if I need to put the dog there. I'll just take the spare tire out, take the fridge out, and the dog's in there. My closing statement, everything you see on this vehicle that has been here for a long time, there is a reason for it. I'm not paid to have lights on. I'm not paid to have that tray on. I'm not paid to have rhino hide on. I'm not paid to have anything on the vehicle. It's there, it's my choice. It's there. And if it stays there, it stays there for a reason. It means that it is good. If, it, if you've seen it and then it's come off at some point, it means that for either I didn't like it or it didn't suit to what I was doing with the vehicle. The lights have stayed there, the winch has stayed there, this bar work has even stayed there. So yeah, there you go guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Questions down below. See you next time.